Hey guys, good evening and welcome back. I hope all of you are doing great, having a good time. My dear students, as you all must be knowing, when we talk about the chapter chemical bonding, which is the favorite chapter of majority of NEET and JE aspirants. And why is that? Because everywhere, almost four to five questions are asked from the chapter chemical bonding. Whether you talk about your NEET examination, whether you talk about your JE examination, and my dear students, all those four or five questions are considered to be very, very, very easy if your concepts are clear. In this particular session, I am going to let you know some amazing tricks by means of which you can solve the questions in less than 10 seconds, right? The four to five questions which come every year in your NEET and JE examination, those questions mainly come from these particular topics. And I'm going to let you know certain tricks which you need to remember so that you can solve all the questions based on all the topics in less than 10 seconds, right? So let's get going, let's get started. And the people who have been following me from past two, three years, they already must be knowing all the tricks which I'm going to let you know now. Have a look, people. First of all, the most frequently asked question is related to bond order, right? My dear students, one particular statement which you need to remember. Bond order is directly proportional to bond strength, which is directly proportional to bond dissociation energy, which is inversely proportional to bond length, right? This is the trend from which anything can be asked. You can be asked, I mean, you'll be given with three, four species. You'll have to compare their bond orders, bond strengths, bond dissociation energies, bond lengths. Easily you can do that. Have a look on the trick through which you can solve these sort of questions. My dear students, just one thing you need to do. Whatever species you are given with. For example, you are given with N2. Let's say you are given with N2. You just have to calculate the total number of electrons in N2, which comes out to be 14. So N2 is the 14 electron species and do remember all the 14 electron species they'll be always having the bond order of 3. When you talk about the 13 electron species just reduce it by 0.5 it becomes 2.5. 12 electron species reduce it by 0.5 it becomes 2. 11 electron species reduce it by 0.5 it becomes 1.5. In the similar way 15 electron species again reduce by 0.5 the bond order becomes 2.5. 16 electron species reduced by 0.5, the bond order becomes 2. So this is how, this is one simple trick through which you can easily calculate bond orders of different species, right? And once you get the bond orders, you can easily talk in terms of bond strengths as well, okay? For example, for example, you have to compare, let's assume you have to compare uh, the bond strengths of your N2, your gain with N2, you are given with, for example, C2 and you are given with B2, for example. You have to talk in terms of their bond lengths. For example, you have to compare their bond lengths. What you'll be doing, you'll be calculating their bond order. Bond order of this species is 3. Bond order of C2, when you talk about C2, it's 2. And bond order of B2, that is 1. Perfect. So, this is the order of the bond order. This is the bond order. Now, whatever is the order for bond order, inverse of that, reverse of that is going to be the order of bond length. So if you talk about the bond length order, it's going to be bond length order, it's going to be like this. You just have to interchange these symbols over. That's all, right? And do remember one more thing. This is one more important thing. Whenever you see the isoelectronic species, isoelectronic species are the ones which have got the same number of electrons. When you particularly talk about the isoelectronic species, isoelectronic species always have got the same bond order. For example, you have got N2 and CO. Both the ones over here are 14 electron species. So both the ones will have the bond order of 3 over here. Perfect. So this is one quick hack through which you can solve the bond order, bond strength, bond dissociation energy, and bond length questions in less than 10 seconds. Point number one. Point number two. My dear students, frequently questions are asked related to hybridization, related to geometry. Perfect. Well, in order to calculate the hybridization, we use one simple method that's called a steric number method, right? And steric number, how do you define it? Number of sigma bonds plus number of lone pairs, okay? You just have to remember a few points. If the steric number comes out to be 2, hybridization is sp, and geometry predicted through hybridization is linear. Similarly, if the steric number is 3, the hybridization is sp2, and the geometry predicted through hybridization, that is trigonal planar. In the similar way, you can talk about different hybridizations and different geometries over here. Perfect. Right? 
and their students. Let's have a look exactly how this particular concept is applied in the questions. For example, have a look. I'm talking about SF4. Perfect. This sulfur over here is the central atom. So first of all, calculate the valence electrons present in the central atom. That's going to be 6. Sulfur, is, it belongs to oxygen family. Now do remember, sulfur is attached to 4 atoms of fluorine. So if I ask you, how many terminal atoms are here? There are 4 terminal atoms. And do remember, the number of terminal atoms is equal to number of sigma bonds. Number of terminal atoms is equal to number of sigma bonds. So sulfur is forming 4 sigma bonds. Sulfur had six valence electrons, out of which it is forming four sigma bond. So that means, out of six valence electrons, sulfur is utilizing four of its valence electrons to form four sigma bonds. So there'll be two electrons left as such on sulfur in the form of a lone pair. So there is one lone pair on sulfur. Now, since you calculate sigma bonds, since you calculate lone pairs, steric number is sigma bonds plus lone pairs. So four plus one, five. And whenever steric number is five, the hybridization is sp3d and geometry predicted through hybridization that is trigonal bipyramidal. Absolutely simple. You talk about water. Oxygen here is a central atom. How many valence electrons it has? Six. How many terminal atoms you have? Two. The number of terminal atoms is equal to number of sigma bonds, right? So oxygen, it had six valence electrons. It is using two of its valence electrons to form two sigma bonds. So it will have four electrons left as such in the form of two lone pairs. So two sigma bonds, two lone pairs. Steric number is two plus two, four. So hybridization is just going to be sp3. If the hybridization is sp3, the geometry predicted through hybridization is simply going to be tetrahedral. Right? Talk about one more. You've got I3 negative two. I3 negative two, can't you write it like this? I, I2 negative two? Absolutely. Iodine here is a, a central atom. It has got seven valence electrons. But over here, there's a negative charge. You need to add it as well. So 7 plus 1 comes out to be 8. Terminal atoms are 2. Therefore, sigma bonds are 2. 8 valence electrons. 2 used to form 2 sigma bonds. So 6 electrons left as such on iodine in the form of 3 lone pairs. So it has got 3 lone pairs. Steric number again comes out to be 5. And hybridization is going to be sp3d. And you can talk about the geometry as well. Similarly, my dear students, I have taken few examples over here. And you guys are going to let me know the hybridization of the central atom as well as the geometry which these particular compounds over here follow. Perfect. I hope you enjoyed this very quick trick by means of which you can calculate bond order is in seconds and at the same time you can calculate the hybridization of different species. You can talk in terms of geometries in very lesser time. So quickly let me know in the comment section about the answers of these particular questions which we have over here. And at the same time, if you have not liked the video yet, I would want every one of you to like the video, share the video with everyone and do subscribe to the channel as well. Take care. God bless you all and love you all. Bye-bye guys.